So my goal this morning is, is to provide you not with advice on how you do your jobs. That's not my area of expertise. What I want to do is give you some bullets, some ammunition, so that you can take what you do well and have more tools to be more effective in what you do. Now, asking a journalist to give a, a marketing or in any kind of way a promotional presentation is a bad idea. It's not what I do. It's not what I'm good at. So please take what I'm saying as my best effort to give you my view of what's going on. Uh, not sugar-coated pretty much by anything. Um, this is a really interesting slide I tossed in here. Um, you might have trouble telling that this slide is a broker slide that ING issued recently to help market an equity index annuity. So when I see these people around here, um, they don't care what an equity index annuity is. They don't understand what it is. The chances of any of these individuals buying an equity index annuity any time in the next 10 or 20 years are less than remote. This is my way of making a little fun at ING, which is a fairly hip company in terms of dealing with financial products. Um, their market is not these people. Their market is me. So how come I'm not up here? How come we have this bias towards pretending that everybody's young until they're about ready to step into the grave? Um, that's got to be one of the big shifts in what we do. And, and <laughs> one of the things I've learned is that uh, I'm not going to talk about this much today, but one of the strongest uh, elements and words in, in what I find dealing with older people is denial. Denial is just a powerful element in terms of how you, how you will find these people when you, when you interact with them. So, um, and I see it all the time because one of the things I've learned is that one of the fastest ways to lose all your friends is to tell them what's going to happen to them when they get old. Um, so, of course, I'm always eager to share the results of my writing, um, you know, and, and uh, people just don't want to hear it. So if you ever need help clearing a room, invite me in, and I can talk to you about my latest piece on incontinence. Um, <laughs> So the first, the first element to make sense of this is the demographic piece. Um, it always surprises me when demographics makes news. By definition, demographics is about people and numbers who have been here for decades. There, is, there are no more boomers, in fact there are fewer boomers today than there were 10 years ago, but, but in terms of all of these trends, these trends have been known for decades. Uh, we don't do well in our society dealing with these kinds of sweeping changes. And I will predict very safely that you will see lots of news stories um, claiming to be surprised at the realities of some of these numbers. And you've heard these before, but they're, I, I want to tee them up for you because they're very important. Um, in terms of looking at Boomers, I, I don't look at boomers as one group. I tend to divide them into three, three cohorts. So I will look at 55 to 64 year old people. I will look at what I call 64 to frailty. It's not a, it's not a, a number, it's a condition. Because that's really what marks a substantial change in, in people's behavior, what they care about, what they want you to care about, and what their families care about. 